we're talking about November 15th. Yes. So you're playing? The Grieg Amarillo Concerto, Edward Grieg, with the DeKalb Symphony Orchestra. It's very exciting. It sounds like it. It's the 15th at? Perimeter College, okay. uh, Georgia State, yeah, in DeKalb. 8 o'clock? Yes, 8 p.m. One performance? One performance only, yes. And yeah. Fyodor Chernevsky is the conductor. That's right. This is your first time playing a concerto in the Atlanta area. It is, yes. That's exciting for you? It is. Practice a lot? Um, absolutely. Every day. <laughs> Every day, hours a day. But this concerto in particular, I have played since I was, I think I was eight or nine the first time I played it with orchestra. And so it's in my fingers and it's in my my head and my blood, and um, that helps a lot when you relearn a piece like that. It may be the most popular piano concerto in the literature. Um, I believe so, yes. It's been played a lot of times. In fact, it's funny, the first time uh, Liszt played his concerto, the Grieg, he side-read it, and the only comment that Grieg had to Liszt was that you're playing it too fast. <laughs> so even Liszt has played it, but too fast, apparently, according to Greek. Is it difficult? Um, it is. It is. It's technically quite challenging. There are some passages in there that definitely needs a lot of work. And it's, I think, almost more emotionally challenging, too. It has a lot of very powerful passages that needs a lot of depth and um, understanding, and I think that is almost more challenging than the technical aspects of the piece. It must be exciting for you also because he's kind of a homeboy he for you. He definitely is, yes. With Grieg, he's, I feel like I almost know him. I love my country, and I love being here in the States, but my roots are from Norway, and I feel a certain connection with Grieg and his pieces and his music because Grieg wrote in a style and in a way that he was very proud of Norway and his heritage. And you can kind of hear it, little places, you know, in all his music, it's very um, folk music sounding, a lot of it. And you can kind of see little mountains or big mountains um, and rivers and, you know, goats and sheep jumping around and um, so you can kind of Picture that when you hear his music. It's extraordinarily in the style of the Romantic area. Yes. I, it, it follows the traditional um, structure of a piano concerto. Yep. It's full of melody, full of development. Yep. And I think if anybody personally were to say, gee, introduce me to a piano concerto, because mm. I don't know anything about it, this is the one you would pick. Yeah, it, it follows all of the structures and stereotypes, I guess, of a, of a piano concerto, yeah. Because of its popularity and its accessibility, mm. because people do play it a lot, mm. does that put a particular challenge, make a particular challenge for you? I don't think so, not for me personally at least. I know it's played a lot, and I enjoy all kinds of interpretations of it. But I feel like also because I have played it since I was so young, I put my stamp on it quite early on. And um, I've been uh, learning it with my first teacher in Norway, um, Einar Steinerkleberg, who's who actually recorded, because Grieg wrote um, two piano concertos, but the second one he didn't finish. And my old teacher actually recorded the parts that he did write for his second piano concerto. And um, he knows so much about Edward Grieg and I feel very lucky and very fortunate to have been able to work with him um, on this piece. And Grieg can be surprising also because oh. for as much as this piano concerto is in the romantic, very centered in the romantic tradition, yes, some of his music is a little bit more in your face and aggressive. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yes, I think, you know, Grieg actually went through a lot of heartbreak in his life. Just one year after he wrote the piano concerto, um, his only daughter died, passed away from uh, meningitis. And um, he was heartbroken from that. And both him and his wife 
didn't have any more children and he struggled a lot. I think that is very visible in his music. Are there challenges that you meet when you're playing with an orchestra that are different than obviously being a solo is for sure, but with piano for hands, for example? Yes, I mean, I, I think so. It's with an orchestra, you play with so many people, and it's the conductor that you have to communicate with who is in charge of all of those people. And so, essentially, you have to trust the conductor to be able to play with all of the orchestral musicians. So it's a little, it's, it's not just a little, actually, it's very different um, with piano forehand. So even when I play with my brother, just a violin, it's, it's just one person, and um, you're right next to um, that other person too, and so it's easier to communicate, and it's easier to rehearse too, I guess. Uh, with the orchestra, you only get a certain number of rehearsals. Um, but that's also something so wonderful and so fun to be able to play um, with so many musicians and to make music with so many wonderful musicians on stage, um, which is really a, a big privilege. I imagine that the challenge for a conductor is to decide, am I simply going to be accompaniment to the pianist? Are we going to be, am I, are we taking a secondary role? Are we true partners or are uh, we're in the forefront? And I know it varies from piece to piece to piece, but I do notice when listening to the, the Atlanta Symphony, mm -hmm. there are various roles that the yeah. orchestra plays. Yeah. And the conductor influences that very much. So that must be something that um, y you guys must work on when you're rehearsing. Absolutely. I mean, usually what happens is that you have a meeting first with the conductor, and then you go through the piece, and if there's any major issues, that you can talk about them before you actually have the first rehearsal. But Essentially, you have to really trust that other person because um, it's uh, you don't have anybody else, right? I mean, I have to trust the conductor and the con conductor has to trust me. Um, and we have to communicate um, on stage and in a concert that um, will work. And um, yeah, you just have to um, really put your full 100% trust in that other person. And so, Communicating with the conductor through to the orchestra is, I think, key when you, you'd play a concerto. Anything else you want to cover? Um, maybe just the fact that it's like how lucky we actually are to be able to perform and do what we love to do. Um, I think playing an instrument and doing what you love every day is so special and so wonderful and it really shows um, so much wonderful things about yourself and and the piece of music like the greek for example is a piece that i have played for for so long and um it's one of my absolutely most favorite pieces in the world and to be able to play that with orchestra i just feel so fortunate and aren't we fortunate in Atlanta <laughs> to have so many resources available it really that is. we can do this? Can't happen in a yeah. lot of cities. Yeah, it is. It's wonderful. I mean, we have so much going on here, and um, I'm so lucky, and I feel so grateful that I'm in this wonderful city that has so much to offer. Well, I can speak as a musical consumer. Yes. It's wonderful to have you here. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. It's great to be here. I've met so many amazing people here, and I felt so welcomed and so included, which is actually pretty difficult for a musician when you move to a new place. Um, and the fact that I've just been welcomed with open arms here, um, I feel very privileged. And just... Um, a reminder that you're also part of the Atlanta Chamber Players. I am, and Georgia George Chamber, Chamber Players. players. <laughs> it couldn't be much better than that. No, and I love all my students at Kansas State, where I teach uh, twice a week, and um, they're all just wonderful, wonderful kids, and um, yeah, so definitely keeping busy here, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Great. Okay, so again, that's November 15th. November 15th, yes. Georgia Perimeter. Georgia Perimeter, yep. 
Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock.